Hey guys, Mike V from Reliable Automotive Equipment here. Today we're going to be going over the Carbon CBR Steel Dent Repair System, otherwise known as VAS 6321-A. All right guys, we're going to go over turning the machine on, plug it into the wall. This is your power switch. Machine will come on. We've got a couple of connections down here. Got a couple of wires down here. We're going to start by doing our ground. So you can see ground highlighted up on this picture right now. And all we're going to do is take our ground clamp and we're going to plug this wire into the ground. Snug that up. We have two other connections right here. One of them says auto on it. That is going to be this tip holder right here. So if we plug this into the auto, This is going to get us into welding on our pull tabs. So if I push this button, when this green light comes on, we do have two settings on this side, manual and auto. Manual is if you want to make up your own formula for what you want to weld onto, you can go over to this side and set your timer and set your power and decide where you want to be with it. To make it more simple, we put these back to zero and now we click on auto. It's automatically going to set the power for what we're going into, but it still gives us the availability. If we think it's a little bit too hot or too cold, we can go into power and time and we can go negative or positive and change that a little bit also. So the easiest way is to start out with the bits in automatic, keep it at zero on both of them, weld a couple pieces on, and see how they stick. So on our piece for the bits, the way that these go in is that we push this button in, drop this in, and this will actually lock this in in different directions. So this won't spin on you. So when we go to put bits in, the pull tabs, it'll go right into this groove. We just hold it on that, touch the panel, it's going to weld automatically. The other item that this will do is shrinking on steel. If we highlight shrinking, FE stands for iron or steel. Pulse is lit up. Manual is lit up. We want to put this onto auto. Pulse means that when we go to shrink, it's going to fire three times in succession. I recommend take it off of pulse and start with it one time first and get used to how the shrinking tool works. We take the little bit piece out. This is one of the shrinking tips, a little bit round on top. This will create a little bit of heat in the panel on the high spot and you can push it down to get your shrink out. The additional one is the flat top that they added to this, which actually works really good. We'll be setting these up in a minute. So on the automatic one, that is going to be for our bits for putting bits on and doing shrinking. We can leave this plugged in. This other one, this blue line, is going to go into Easy Tool. So again, same thing here. And now on this one, there's a little clamp here. And out of these three tools, this is where it's going to get clamped onto for bringing power into the unit. So we put it on easy tool, and again, it's generally always going to go to manual to start with, but put that on auto, and now when we go to put this on the panel, as soon as this makes contact, it's going to weld to the panel, do your dent pulling out, and to take it off, we're just going to twist it slightly, and it'll fall right off. They do have another setting here for manual setting. The way that this is set up right now with the automatic, the easy tool setup, is as soon as you touch your bit or your tip to the panel, it will weld automatically on contact, which actually works really nice. If you're not comfortable with that, they do make a manual setting, a optional manual setting with a, re a remote control button on it that you can put the tip on the panel, then push the button, it'll fire the power through. I think once you use this with the automatic setup on it, it works really, really good. All right, so putting the 
tips in. This has four little notches in it. This has a little pin sticking up here. Put it in position and it will not turn on you. And if you feel comfortable holding the gun this way, or you feel more comfortable with this, it's relatively either way. You can just take this back out, turn it, drop it into the other groove, and it'll stay in that position. This one is have the little pin on it. The one shrinking tip has no pin on it. Because this is completely round, this will rotate around in it, but that's fine. And then same thing with the other shrinking tip. Just drop it in, push the pin, it locks it in, keeps it from falling out. That pin is just going to drop into that little groove on the shaft. All right, we're going to be talking about hooking up the ground cable. A couple different ways on this. If you do notice the way that the wire comes in, we really want this point here to be on our ground. So that would be onto the bare metal. If we do it this way, everything is going to try and travel through the little pivot pin, transferring everything over back down to the cable. So anything we do for welding on, we always want to make sure that we have as best connection as we can for good ground to the material. And on this wonderful door that we got, we have a little bit of a Bondo issue on here from a previous repair. So I can take this area here, clamp this on like this. We have our ground set. We can actually start doing our welding. Option number two, this little pin in the center that pushes out, we can actually weld to the panel and not have to clean the edge of the door. So if you are working in the middle of the door, you can actually weld your ground cable right to the panel. And the way that we do that is onto the unit here. We are going to hit number one ground. We're going to put it on automatic. And then we are going to take our handle assembly. We can take any of our shrinking tip or a bit tip, any of these in here. And then all we're going to do is take this over top of the surface. This is our actual ground. The pin itself is actually insulated, so when we push the pin down, that's actually power coming through. It'll pick it up on the ground, and we'll weld on. This is allowable to be pivoted. The ground part is still touching, so you want to make sure that you have the ring over bare metal, not just the center, pit, uh, center tip on it. So. To take off, all we're going to do is take the little knob on top and twist it, and it pops up the pin right off. All right, option number three on grounding, they added on a really nice ground strap that can really very less obtrusive than the, the piece going in. We're going to take our ground clamp and this piece here on the bottom just wraps around that. We are still going to be on number one on the machine for ground welding. And on this little piece here, we're going to roll this up so just the point is sticking out. And all we're going to do on that then is take our same unit that we used to set the other ground. But now we're just going to set this on the panel and then touch this. And that welds onto the panel. And then we just tighten up this slightly so it keeps it from moving around and falling off. So nice setup on that. Keeps the stuff out of your way on you. You still have a nice ground connection to it for setting your, all your pins. To take this off, just screw this piece back up. Twist it off and it comes right off. Okay, now we're going to go. We got our ground set up. We're going to set up for the easy tool. So on the machine, we're going to hit the button for easy tool. Make sure it's still on automatic. We're going to take the blue cord that is plugged into the easy tool. So we have three pieces that this will work on. The other two are up there. We're going to start with this one first. So this will be an automatic weld when this touches the material. On the center point of this, when we first, before we even start welding on there, we want to burn a little bit of steel onto the copper tip. It will actually, a couple of burns in on it, it builds up a little bit of steel residue. 
Steel to steel welds so much easier than copper to steel. So when we take this and wherever we want to put it, it'll weld right on. So to take it off, just twist, it comes right off. And what we are looking for to make a really great weld on this is the end of the tip should end up starting to have a little bit of steel residue build up on the tip. That will actually, if you're starting out with a brand new tip, you're gonna just stick it on the panel a couple of times, let it burn up a little bit of residue on there, it'll weld on so much easier. The thought process behind this of the new steels and technologies that they're using on these products right now is the less heat intrusive that we have on this, the less burn on the back of the panel will be for corrosion protection. So this is what a lot of manufacturers are going for now. So this we want to burn in very quickly with very little heat so we don't tear up the corrosion protection on the back and it's very simple to pull off. So the way that this works is a little bit higher on the amperage and a very, very short amount of time burn on it. So when we touch this to the panel, it's just very quick. It actually welds on really, really good. And to just twist it, it comes right off. So part of the other easy tools that we have is the little handheld one. We do have a slide hammer one. And this one, you can see in the picture, has not had any burn on it yet. So this is a brand new tip. So when we go to put this on the panel, it'll weld on. I'm just going to do it a couple of times. And then at this point, we actually have some steel residue building up on the tip, so it's actually going to weld on better. Again, very, very cold weld going on it, but yet it really holds on good. The third one that we have, which this is really nice, this gives you a more controlled pull on this. Again, power onto the upper piece, and then we have the plier action for being able to pull up. So we have a couple of low spots here, represent a little bit of hail damage and little dings in there. What we want to do, instead of trying to drop this directly onto the panel, if we can hold this up in the air, and then we can take our time, go over the dent area, and then just drop it down, And now we can finesse the dent out with a little bit of pressure on it and then turn this to release it. Go right back next to it. A little bit of finessing out, twist it off. And instead of trying to over pull it, because if we put this on and we start over pulling it, now we're gonna have a high spot in the place. So the nice part about this tool is that you can really take a big dent, small dent, you can work it several times, but you can take this piece right here, and best thing is just very light pressure on pulling up on this. Remember where the feet are is going to be putting pressure back down on the panel as you're pulling up on the unit. So these are adjustable that we can slide these in or out and these will actually can go out this way and be further away from it. If you want some of the other additional pieces on this We do have a set of round ones, big and small. And what this is nice about this going around a relatively shallow dent is that this will help put pressure back on the crown of the dent as you're pulling out the part that's in. So there's three round ones and then they actually have square ones also. All right, we are going to be getting out of Easy Tool, and we are going to be shrinking where it says FE, which stands for steel, and we're just gonna push the button, highlight the light, make sure it is on auto. 
We're going to start off with the round shrinking tip into the gun assembly. Push the pin down. Slide this in so that pin is going to go around that groove. And now it's locked in. And again, this is going to be instant heat when it goes on. The purpose is of going on top of the high spot that we, these we purposely put in. I want to take these and shrink these down without hitting them with a hammer. So I can take the roundness of this part, I can come in this way, I can come in this way, it doesn't matter. What is important on this is when you make contact with the panel, hold this on the panel until the machine turns off. This is going to be a little bit longer on the timer. Just give you a show and we're going to give a little bit of push on it. And it's going to take it right down. So you can control the amount of push on it will depend on how flat it will go. If you push too hard, you'll actually push a dent back into the panel again. So this one just slightly high. So I'm just gonna go on top of it with pretty much no pressure. And that takes it down pretty flat again. So again, to show, I can come in sideways. Still a little bit of height right there. and I can drop that down pretty good. So the round one, we also have a flat one which I'm gonna pull up right now. We're gonna take out the tip. The other one that we have has a completely flat point on it. Same thing, put it in, let the pin lock in. So this, again, we're gonna come straight down on top of the high spot. That's pretty good right where it is. So this one has a tendency to be a little bit more aggressive than the round one. I'm not really putting a whole lot of pressure on it. And it's really flattening out pretty nice. So by messing around with this, at the amount of pressure and what you're putting on this, you can almost get your small size dent, your bigger size dent, any of your stuff out with it where you might end up with a very thin coat of glaze on it or Hit it lightly with a metal file. See if you have any low spots on it. You might be able to just DA it and send it to paint. So one word of note on this, if you noticed, this creates a lot more heat than the pulling part does. This will burn the corrosion protection on the back side of the panel. So we want to use this sparingly. So when you're pulling the dents out, try not to over pull on them so you create the high spots. When you end up pushing them back down, make sure that you reapply the corrosion protection on the back of the panel as per the manufacturer's uh, directions. All right, so we are going to go into the pull bits now. So on the screen of the machine, we were on shrinking. I wanna go up to number two where it says bits. Push the button there. And once again, make sure that we're on automatic with it. Once we have changed over to bits, then I'm going to take the bit holder. And again, on this, we do have a little piece sticking out right here that we can line up with the four notches inside the front of the head. So when we go to load the piece in, drop that into one of the grooves. And now I am set to weld the pull bits on. So all we're going to do with this is set these into the groove. You don't have to push them in really hard. We just want to make contact with the piece. If you over push this on really, really hard and you go to weld this on, now when you go to pull this off, you're going to pull the whole bit back off the panel. So very light pressure loading the bit. And then all we're going to do is once the bit makes contact, and then I can hold the pin, take off the handle, and this is now welded in place. Tremendous amount of strength with that to take them off. They turn, and if you look at the end of the bit, there's almost no burn on it. So this is an area that depending on the type of material or the strength that you're working on, we might wanna bump up our timer just a little bit on this. 
We are on automatic setting, but remember on the screen, we can bump it up a little bit if we feel like that they're not welding on that grate. I'm going to continue on with this right now. So we're going to do a, when we're doing a, a row of these, because when we set these up, our objection is to set up the tabs that we can put a pin through them and then pull them all at one time. So as we are putting these on, if I want to get one really close and this piece goes and hits this tab, this is going to ground out to this tab. So the way that we get these close, set your pin. We're going to take this and turn this at a little bit of an angle. And then I'm going to take my bottom piece and make sure that my top piece is not contacting the previous pin. And I'm going to just take the bottom put it and then stand it up straight and we have one really close to one another. That's about the amount of movement you can do on this without that piece falling off, but you can continue on how close or how far away you want to be depending on what you're pulling. Just that simple. Taking them off, again, same thing, twist. And these can be reused until the actual point starts deforming on the end. You actually get quite a few welds out of this. Later on, we're gonna show that we actually have a tool for this for cutting the points on this that we can actually trim this bit up to 10 times and keep them very consistent. Okay, so on the bits, we have straight bits, we have curved bits. What's the difference? All right, one's curved, one isn't. So the, it is gonna be up to you how you wanna put these on the panel. I'm gonna give you a couple examples. If we are doing a crease in this direction and I take my curved ones, I wanna make sure that the opening of the bit is going to be going in this direction. So as I start welding these on, My next one, I can only get so close with the bottom piece because of the direction of the way that tab is going. My straight ones, same operation. So if we were pulling a relatively stout body line, I want to be able to get this as close as I can That will give me more of a strength of a pull on the body line than this one will. So this is basically, depending on how you want to set your pin on the panel, you can set it on any way that you want. It's just personal preference on how you want to set up the, the points. If you want a really strong pull on a line for your pin to line up going through there, this, this is your best bet. This is for more of a lighter pull if that's what you want to use it for. It's really no big deal on either one of them. So what we're going to do when we're going to put a row of bits in a long area on this body line right here, when it gets pushed in, it looks a little bit distorted. You think you're trying to weld your bits on directly on the body line and you usually end up missing it a little bit as you bring it out. So we have a neat little trick on here little magic marker and we have a little flexible meter stick so if I just take this onto the panel and I eyeball my existing body line then I can take this push this down into the deformed area and then just take the little fine line marker Come across this, and that now just gives me a reference line of where to weld my pieces so it's in a relatively straight line. I found that if you try and weld them on where you think they go, by the time you pull them out, 
you're going to have your point a little bit off of the body line. So it's just a great little quick tip on how for welding all that pieces on. So then we take our, and this will weld right through the, the little black line on there. And we're just going to select a bar for going through. So as we start getting into pulling bars, this is our smaller of the two that we have and I really don't feel comfortable putting this one over here. I'd rather have it extend out to here, so I'm gonna grab my other longer one. So this one versus the other one, this one you can actually loosen this and slide this wherever you want on the bar. The other smaller one has a fixed point in the center, so you're limited on what you can do on this, but this gives you the availability of stretching across a long panel and being able to pull over to the side if you need to. We do have a couple different feet on here. So I really want to set Just want to make sure that the feet are on a relatively strong point of the, of the door because remember whatever you're pulling up with on here you're putting pressure down on the feet and you really don't want to put more damage into the panel. So on this I want to get over about here. So on this, I can adjust my tension on this up here. The nice thing about this is you, as you are working on pulling up on this, you can actually lock in the bar and it'll hold the tension on there. So I'm going to put a little bit more tension on this. And then the nice thing on steel is if we just kind of 
we can feel the tension on it. You can feel the steel coming out. And I think I'm going to try one more time here. And the purpose of this with the little slot in the panel, as it starts pulling up, it's going to grab the other ones as it gets to the height so that they all move independently of one another. And I think I'm going to take tension off here and I'm going to put my pull point over here a little bit. And on these to get in, you can just take the tabs, give them a little push to the side so that you can have a little bit of clearance of your pull point going in. can just continue pulling. So depending on what you have, as we're just doing the setup on this, trying to get our body line back in position, as this starts coming up, you can start doing stress relief on the panel. This will stay by itself so that you have two hands available for doing stress relief on here. You can even start cleaning off some of the other areas and go back in with the easy tool and start pulling out additional damage as you're working with this also. So an amount of strength on these. So what I like about these is very, very small heat footprint with the pieces going on, the welding of themselves, they twist off super easy but under direct pressure of coming straight out, these things have a tremendous amount of strength in them, which is pretty impressive with it. That's a pretty impressive curve. So as we're welding pull tabs on, straight line, other dents, what do we do with the curve? Our bars are straight. We do have a little bit thinner bar in there, but for these to bend, they're not gonna bend. We want to have enough strength on this that when we actually pull this up that these don't bend this way also. So we have a pretty stout bar. If I set this across the curve, and I highlighted the curve with tape because it's a black door right now, it shows up a little bit better. This is where my bar is going to go. When I go to weld my tabs on the curve that I want to pull, I want to put this in the direction I'm going to weld this at a slight angle so that this bar can still catch this. And as I start welding on my next one, these are going to start straightening up. And then when I get to this part here, these are now going to start leaning in so that they line up with the straight line. So when we have our tabs welded all the way across, all the top pieces are going to be angled out on different areas, but they're all going to be in a straight line. So when we go to pull on the bar, we're grabbing the tops of these, and even though that these are welded on at an angle, you are still gonna put pressure on the radius of the curve to pull that radius out. So on a really long one, you might do it in two sections to make it easier, because these being burned on this way are still gonna have the same amount of strength at the point. It's just gonna be a different point where the bar is grabbing that but your pull point will still be on the radius. All right, so if we look at our unit right now, the little dashes on time and power represent that the unit is in sleep mode. This is designed that if you have not used the machine for I think it's approximately two minutes or three minutes, it'll go into sleep mode. The zeros go off on this. You go to weld something on, you have no power coming out of the gun assembly. All we have to do is just hit the button again that we're on and it wakes up and when the zeros are on, you're ready to weld again. All right, so all the welding on of the bits. They welded on really good. They had very little burn on the end, but eventually this tip right here will start wearing away. It'll start burning off a little bit. So we have a great tool right here that we can actually trim this bit 10 times. The curved ones can get trimmed up to seven times because of the curve in here, we lose some of that space. And the way that this system works is on here, there are numbers one through 10. 
our first cut is going to be number one. So when we have this worn down, we are going to take the tip of this inside of the cutter and then I want to pull this back to the number one and then hit the trigger and what we have with that it cuts off about not quite an eighth of an inch off of the tip so if we hold it up to a one that has not been cut we can actually see that we have a little bit of a difference right there. So keep this in mind that if you are setting up your tabs onto a straight line to pull a crease out of the panel, this smaller one, if they get in with the taller ones, this will end up pulling higher than the other ones. So once we cut these, they have a set of rings that you can take these put the bits on, put a little tag on there that says number one, and this is all your first cuts that you've done on it. That way you keep them separated from the actual, the original length of the piece itself. On the half twist ones, it'll do the same thing. It just sits in there just a little bit different. The piece will go into there the same way, and then in here is a little groove that the side of the piece will drop down into Drop it down, make sure it's back on the number one. And same thing again, another piece trimmed off. So when you are done with the first round of cuts on all your keys, we go to number two. And the way that we go to number two, there's a little pin here on the bottom that you pull out. And then we rotate this and let that lock in that number two is now showing with the groove, and that will be your second cut. It's easier to do your first cut on all your tabs first, and then go do your second cut. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bunch of cuts on there. Try and keep them organized. Okay. All right, talking about some of the pull bars that we have here. So this is the one that has the piece in the center and it is not movable. So this is still a nice bar for getting into some small areas, but you don't have the availability if you're on a longer door like we are here, you're not gonna have enough stability to do your pull on it. The feet that are on here just get held on with the screw. They can slide all the way in and out. A single pad that will pivot they also have a double pad that actually pivots both ways. So depending on the contours of the where you're putting this on, this might be a better choice. Again, a little thumb screw on there. And lock it up wherever you want. So when we move on to the other bar that we had on here. So same basic flat pad that it has. It does have a different opening for the other bar, so you can't really mix them up. The main thing about this one here that we discussed before is that this piece can move. So this is nice if you are doing a cross a roof of a car or a hood, you can put this all the way on the other side, move this to where you want to make your pull, you can get a lot more direction on this for setting this one up. This also has a double set of pads available for it that will pivot in the same direction. And if you notice on here, there is a little suction cup on here that when you are on the side of the car and you have the bar hanging on the side, you will have your suction cup going up to the car, a little bit of water on it. And then this piece here is a tensioning device that you can actually pull on this and it will lock in and not let the bar fall off the car. So when you do your initial setup on the side, you can really, with the bar, just kind of hold it up with your knee, put the suction cup on, tension out on the string, and the whole bar should hang on the side of the car. Then the other one that we have for some smaller indirect pulls is more of a simple one 
but it will not hold it up like the other ones do get locked in. So we have a single and a double pad for this. And this you can set up a couple different ways. Put that in the middle. We can put the hook piece on the end. And then you can actually have it and use this as a lever to do a pull on that. And you can also run this out to the end, bring this one into the middle. And then you can actually have one that you can actually pull up on. So if you just have one or two little single points to do, you don't want to drag out one of the bigger bars, this will work out great for what it does. And that takes care of the pulling bars. All right, guys, that wraps up the carving unit, the VSS 6321A. You guys have any questions, phone number's on the screen, website's on the screen. Have a great day, guys.